next at 5, South Florida keeping cool, and another round of sweater weather is on the way. Double trouble, siblings sent to the hospital instead of school after a woman's dangerous drive. Congress weighing whether to save the top three car makers from collapse. The president-elect insulted by Al-Qaeda as the terror group releases another message of hate. I think that um, I shot him because he, he was suffering. And a controversial confession from the mouth of a child. Hey everybody, I'm Val Keys Nere. I'm Craig Stevens. 7 News continues now at 5. Live from the news station, this is 7 News at 5. And in the news at 5 o'clock, South Florida is still shivering for a third day in a row now. It has many asking, where's that trademark Florida warmth? Good evening. The brisk blast moving in, and it's not moving out just yet. At least it's sunny. A few more days of tumbling temps in store. Chief Meteorologist Phil Farrow is live in the Weather Center with the details on this. We've got the sun, right, Phil? That's right, and it was a cold start to the day. Let me show you how we woke up. 49 degrees in Perrine and Pembroke Pines. 50 degrees in Homestead and Hollywood. Fort Lauderdale with 51. 52 in Miami and Miami Beach. Now, how will we wake up tomorrow? Not as cold. We're looking at temperatures between 50 and 55, so the cold will stick around for at least another day or so. If you think it's cold here, it's a lot colder up in North Florida. There is a freeze warning in effect for this evening. Basically from Gainesville through Jacksonville, the temperatures will be hovering right around the 32 degree mark. Now, the cool weather looks like we'll stick around for at least a few more days. Here's your five day temperature trend. The average high is 81 degrees, average low is 67. You can see that slowly will be warming up, but we're going to stay below seasonal averages at least through the start of next week. And some long range models are suggesting that we may get another cool front coming in just in time for Thanksgiving. I'll have a lot more on this in the local forecast coming up in weather. Also in the news at 5 o'clock, twins in trouble while waiting for the school bus. The siblings struck by a car. 7 News reporter Richard Jordan live for us outside Miami Children's Hospital in Southwest Miami-Dade. Richard? Craig, thankfully the children are doing better, listed in good condition after a terrifying close call. My wife called me screaming on the phone. Parents in a panic. It's too scary. The couple's 12-year-old twins, Deidre and Omar Brothways, hit by a car while the two waited to catch a bus to school. Not good to start the day like that. Police believe a careless driver lost control. I actually saw her swerve into the sidewalk and hit the two kids waiting for their bus. I don't think that she was paying attention to what she was doing at the time. She possibly became distracted when this collision occurred, but we're not sure exactly uh, what distracted her if she was distracted. Despite the driver's distraction, several people living nearby say the intersection at 251st Street and 124th Avenue in Southwest Miami-Dade is confusing because of a curve in the road and downright dangerous. It is a, a very dangerous crossroad. So dangerous, the residents feel there should not be a bus stop. If they would change their location to down one of the side streets or something, instead of directly inside of the um, the intersection, it would probably be a lot safer for, for the kids in the neighborhood, you know? The children's parents agree. It's just scary that they have they had to be airlifted. That's scary, you know, because usually that's not something good. The children will spend the night in the hospital as a precaution, but again, they are listed in good condition. The accident happened just five houses from where they live. In the meantime, police did cite the driver that was involved in the crash for careless driving. Several people said that she was visibly distraught and sincerely concerned for the children's well-being. We're live outside Miami Children's Hospital in Southwest Miami-Dade. Richard Jordan, 7 News. All right, Richard. A Dillard High teacher reportedly cleared of any wrongdoing in the fatal shooting of a teenager at that school. A student telling police he warned the teacher that the student was planning to bring a gun to school the day of the shooting. The Broward Teachers Union now says a police investigation shows that that student was lying. 15-year-old Amanda Grace Collette was shot and killed last week. The victim's friend, Tia Wimberly, charged with murder. Police say Wimberly committed the crime after becoming upset the two had stopped speaking.
The big three automakers hitting another roadblock in Congress as they make their case for a big bailout before a House committee. Seven's Nicole and Salada live for us in the Plex with these details. Nicole? Well, Craig, the bad news just seems to get worse. Stocks fell hard this afternoon, taking the Dow below 8,000. Here's a look at the numbers. The Dow lost 427 points to drop to 7,997. Now, the Nasdaq dropped 97 to 1386, and the S&P 500 fell 52 points to 806. All of this as the big three automakers come to Washington to plead their case for help. Well, this you don't see every day. Gene Simmons from KISS ringing the opening bell on Wall Street, opening to what would be a dismal day. The Dow dipping below 8,000 for the first time in five years. But the real action was in Washington. But let me welcome uh, our witness to the to the committee. Let me... From the Senate and one bailout, the $700 billion financial rescue, to the House and another. Leaders of the nation's top automakers continuing their plea for a lifeline. Tuesday, they practically begged for rescue. This is all about a lot more than just Detroit. It's about saving the U.S. US economy from a catastrophic collapse. We must join our competitors today in asking for your support to gain access to an industry bridge loan that would help us navigate through these difficult economic crises. We're asking for assistance for one reason, to address the devastating automotive industry recession caused by our nation's financial meltdown. But critics say the failing automakers should use the bankruptcy system to restructure. We're going to be there, make sure the warranty will always be uh, fulfilled, and the companies are going to be there. We're going to support them. We're going to help propel them. We're going to get them strong. But we're not going to keep putting money into them while they're, uh, frankly, uncompetitive long term. Aside from the struggling car companies, more bad news for the economy. Housing starts at their lowest in 50 years. And a University of Florida study predicts consumers here will dramatically cut their holiday spending this season, which could lead to the worst sales numbers in decades. But back in D.C., listen to this one question posed to the automakers by a California congressman. I'm going to ask the three uh, executives here to raise their hand if they flew here commercial. Let the record show no hands went up. And that's because they flew private jet. Congressman Brad Sherman also asked if they'd be willing to sell those private jets. Not a hand went up. The CEO of General Motors did tell leaders that his company is spending about $5 billion a month. And so far, no one on Capitol Hill seems very optimistic that the big three will get the bailout that they are seeking. Live in the Plex, Nicole Insalata, 7 News. Also here on 7 News at 5 o'clock, President-elect Obama is, quote, insulted by al-Qaeda in a new message of terror. One of al-Qaeda's top terrorists launching a demeaning racist attack on Mr. Obama. 7's Dave Cartoonin is live in the Newsplex with the details. Dave? Well, Belkis, the Obama transition team would not comment on the tape, but the president-elect is attracting defenders from both sides of the aisle. It looks and sounds like others we've seen before, but the latest multimedia manifesto from al-Qaeda has a new target, President-elect Obama. In it, the purported voice of al-Qaeda number two, Ayman al-Zawari, speaks over video of a yarmulke wearing Obama visiting Israel earlier this summer over a translated message that says, quote, you were born of a Muslim father, but you chose to stand in the ranks of the enemies of the Muslims. But its sharpest invective came atop a photo of Malcolm X, trying to show the new president doesn't represent change like the 60s militant did, instead saying he's like secretaries of state Con Lisa Rice and Colin Powell, calling all three, quote, house Negroes, a racial epithet applied to slaves who served whites in their masters' homes rather than working in the fields. Reaction to the tape was swift from both sides of the aisle. What we have here is more despicable and pathetic comments by al-Qaeda terrorists. And uh, in, in America, we are going to have a smooth transition from one administration to the next. I think they're pretty nervous in al-Qaeda because we have a whole new uh, approach here in the United States. We have a new unity behind our president-elect. He sends a message to the world that represents the, the America that we really are. But the new tape once again calls to mind a statement Vice President-elect Joe Biden would probably like to take back. Mark my words, it will not be six months before the world tests Barack Obama like they did John Kennedy. 
Well, the 11 minute long message wasn't directed solely at the new president, however. Zawari said Obama's victory represents a failure of President Bush's policy and admission of defeat in Iraq. Live in the Newsplex, Dave Cartoonin, 7 News. Well, Dave, the president elect reportedly tapping former Senate Majority Leader Tom Daschle to head the Department of Health and Human Services. Former South Dakota Senator, a long considered a favorite for the position because of his work in health care, Daschle served in the Senate for 17 years before losing his reelection bid in 2004. He was a close advisor to Mr. Obama throughout the campaign. Former President Bill Clinton reportedly agreeing to disclose the names of every major donor to his presidential library and foundation. The move an apparent effort to ease concerns about any possible conflicts of interest should Hillary Clinton become Secretary of State. The New York Senator is reportedly on a short list of names being considered for that post. A tool bag lost in space, forcing NASA to change some scheduled spacewalks. Astronauts <clears throat> making repairs outside the International Space Station accidentally letting go of a backpack-sized bag yesterday. They'll now have to share the remaining tools to finish work on the station. Astronauts began unloading some recycling equipment to the aging space station, including a filtering system capable of turning urine and sweat into drinking water. And as the news continues here from the Newsplex, here a child's chilling confession after he's accused of shooting his father and another man to death. Kids in custody accused of stealing a car, then leaving a home wrecked. Scares near school. Two students say they were targeted on their way to class. And a high seas hijacking at the hands of pirates. Mom, what she makes for the holidays can't be found in a cookbook. Because what mom adds to every holiday meal is an ingredient all her own. Frozen Butterball turkeys, 10 pounds or larger, are just 99 cents a pound. Winn-Dixie fully cooked half spiral sliced hams are only $2.49 a pound. And five pound bags of Idaho russet, yellow, or red potatoes are buy one, get one free. And even though you can bring home everything you need for the holiday season from Winn-Dixie, only mom can bring home the love. The year-end sell-a-thon is on, and the clock is ticking. We're closing out 2008 by giving you some amazing deals. Now, through the end of the year, you can get up to 7,500 in combined cash allowance on 2008 models. Plus, get a no-extra-charge DVD on select Chrysler, Jeep, and Dodge vehicles. And we have hundreds of financing options available, so we're making it easier to get the new vehicle you want. The Chrysler, Jeep, and Dodge year-end sell-a-thon is on at your local dealer. So hurry in before 2008 is over. Take a dip into one of the hottest pools on South Beach. It's on Louie's List. Ahead. January 2nd, sold out. January 4th, sold out. January 16th, sold out. January 18th, sold out. Now a fifth show's been added. Friday, February 6th. Hit. After hit. After hit. Get ready for Billy Joel. Now by overwhelming demand. Friday, February 6th at Hard Rock Live. Tickets on sale now at Hard Rock Live box office and Ticketmaster.com. Four sold-out shows. Now a fifth show. Friday, February 6th, Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. Eight Hess truck, bright lights, big sound, a real hydraulic lift, plus a motorized front loader with working bucket. Only twenty-two ninety-nine in Hess stations. Energizer batteries included. Oh, oh, oh. Happy holidays from Hess. This is a 7 News alert. We're getting pictures in now from the Bronx where there is a fire that is fully consuming a building right now. Indeed, and uh, as a result of this fire, we're learning that the subway service in that area of the Bronx has been disrupted because of the situation there. We're going to keep an eye on this over at the Satellite Center, and if we get any more new information or video, we'll let you know. And now, a child charged with murder. Now the eight-year-old trying to explain his actions. I think I shot my dad because he was suffering, I think. I think I thought I needed suffering. But some say police went too far to get this chilling confession. 
The child in the video is accused of shooting his own father and another man. But some lawyers say his confession won't hold up in court. 7's Charles Belay is live in the Satellite Center with more on this. Charles? Okay, Belkis and Craig, the confession video has some people wondering if the 8-year-old is really a killer or if Arizona authorities have done, done him a grave injustice. The murder suspect sinks in a sofa chair. His low voice speaks softly. He's only eight years old. So it's real important that you tell us what happened. I don't know if the gun went off by accident. Police interviewed the boy alone with no family member present a day after authorities near Flagstaff, Arizona, say he killed his father and another man who rented a room in their home. Initially and repeatedly, the third grader told the two female officers he found their bodies after coming home from school. You walked around, and then what you did? And then I started walking down the street towards my house. Mm -hmm. And I saw the door open, and I saw the <laughs> there. And I ran, and I said, Dad, Dad. And I went upstairs, mm -hmm. and I saw him. And you saw him? But an hour later, a second tape shows detectives pressing the boy again and again to tell the truth, saying, we think you're not being honest, and claiming they knew that he did it. What happened with you? I don't know. Come on, tell us the truth. I'm not. I'm not lying. How about if we have somebody that told us that you might have shot him? Then finally the boy changes his story. How many times do you think you fired the gun? I think twice. You think twice? Five times. Do you think it could have been more than twice? No, I, I, I thought it was twice. Okay. You shot your dad twice? Yeah. Okay. And then how many times did that gun shoot? I think twice. And now that my dad. Why would he do it? The boy said he did it because his father and the other man were suffering, though he never says how. I shot my dad because he was suffering, I think. I think I thought I was suffering. Okay. So I might have shot him, so I didn't want him to suffer. I don't think. And then I went outside and then I saw, at first, I, when I ran in, I saw and I thought, and then I went outside and I saw and because he was shaking and I think that time went off. And then I went upstairs and I saw my dad. And um, I think that um, I shot him because he, he was suffering. Under a gag order, few details have come out, but police say there is probable cause to justify the murder charges, and they cast doubt on reports the father may have abused his son. This is a room that we talk to people, and we make a promise to each other that we're only going to tell the truth. Okay. Yeah. The boy's lawyer says the interrogation was improper because the eight-year-old was never given his rights, and a family member or legal representative was not with him during the questioning. He says, quote, they became very accusing early on in the interview, two officers with guns at their side. It's very scary for anybody, for sure, an eight-year-old kid. Another hearing is scheduled today for the eight-year-old. He is being charged as a juvenile and held at jail for minors. He has not entered a plea. In the Satellite Center tonight, I'm Charles Belay, 7 News. All right, Charles. Up next, from the Newsplex, a murder mystery reopened decades later, and police hoping to crack this cold case. Also, parts of the country trying to dig out from the white stuff after the snow keeps piling up. And a hot spot to keep you cool on South Beach. Got to check it out. It is on Louis' list. Closed captioning, sponsored by City Furniture, offering same-day delivery seven days a week. The new Big Night Out is a big night in with a big night in deal from Pizza Hut. Three pounds of Tuscany pasta, a medium one-topping pizza, and warm breadsticks for just $21.99. Order in pasta and pizza from Pizza Hut. The year-end sell-a-thon is on, and the clock is ticking. We're closing out 2008 by giving you some amazing deals. Now, through the end of the year, you can get up to 7,500 in combined cash allowance on 2008 models. Plus, get a no-extra-charge DVD on select Chrysler, Jeep, and Dodge vehicles. And we have hundreds of financing options available, so we're making it easier to get the new vehicle you want. The Chrysler, Jeep, and Dodge year-end sell-a-thon is on at your local dealer. So hurry in before 2008 is over. These New Yorkers know great pasta. It's really good. I love it. But they didn't know it was Tuscany pasta from Pizza Hut. Three pounds of restaurant quality pasta with breadsticks delivered for just $12.99. Now get pasta from Pizza Hut. 
Charles Belay live in the Plex. Here's a look at some of the stories coming your way all new at 530. A coach at a prominent South Florida school facing a judge accused of a sex scandal. Drivers in the Midwest getting a taste of what is to come this winter. Boy, doesn't that look awful. And an emergency for an elderly woman needing assistance to fly and somehow ends up on the wrong plane. These stories and more when I join Lynn for 7 News at 530. We're up early thinking about your health, even if you're not. At the Publix Bakery, we bake our Italian five-grain bread fresh every morning by adding a mixture of whole grains, flax, and sunflower seeds. We make it easy to get more nutritious grains in your diet because we have your healthy day in mind. Aw, uh, go for a walk? Publix, where shopping is a pleasure. Get what you want. Get what DSL doesn't deliver. Comcast High Speed Internet with Power Boost. With speeds up to a blazing fast 12 megs. Surf safely with McAfee Security Suite. Consolidate your contacts in one convenient place and get tons of online storage. Get what you want. Get what you need. Make the switch to Comcast High Speed Internet with Power Boost. Just $24.99 a month for six months. Call 1 800 Comcast today. Yeah. The fuel-efficient Accord EXL has a luxuriously appointed interior and technology features like an iPod connection, available navigation system with voice recognition, and Bluetooth connectivity. So in an Accord EXL, destination is ahead. You can always find what you're looking for. Get APR financing as low as 1.9% on 2009 Accords for well-qualified buyers. Temperatures are cooling down, but uh, South Beach is still hot. Always so many events, so many parties, so many tourists. And while the hotels are usually packed, there's one that rolls out the red carpet for the locals. Tonight, it's on Louie's list. No question, the South Beach pool scene is hot. And it can definitely get wild and crazy. Maybe not. So, where do you go when you just want to chill by the pool yet still have a good scene? I know just the place. It's one of Sobe's best kept secrets where the locals go when they want to relax by the pool, hang with friends, and maybe indulge in a day at the spa. Check it out the Standard Hotel. The yoga classes here are sick. Yeah. Really good. We're big Standard fans. <laughs> yeah, I'm also a big Standard fan. For 50 bucks, it's one of the few South Beach pools where you don't have to be a hotel guest in order to hang. It's a very calm crowd. It's not like crazy party. Right. No, no. It's like to relax. But it's got a good vibe. I think it's got a sexy but under the radar kind of vibe to it, too. Yeah. And the food is good and the drinks are amazing. Some come by boat, others paddle their way there. I found these guys playing dirty in the mud. I was really wet going on and they encouraged, you know, for you to rub on one another. And how was that for you? It was fun. It was, it was, I think you liked it. Real exciting. The hot tub, a waterfall. But if you want to chill, there's the Arctic Plunge Pool. Oh yeah, that's cool. I don't like cold water, but it's supposed to be really good for the body and the blood. Young circulation to go from hot to cold. So, uh, here it goes. Oh, God, that's cold. As for the main pool, salt water, so no harsh chemicals. It even has an underwater sound system. It's very loungy. All right, time to relax. Let's hit the spa. The spa at the Standard is the hottest and the sexiest spa on South Beach. And there's one big reason for that. It's co-ed. The sauna, the steam room, even the showers, all of it co-ed. But the best? is the sexy Turkish hammam. With heated marble slabs, it's the perfect place to hang and make a new friend. Usually this place is full of sweaty naked people, but I guess the camera kind of scared them all away. Come back, naked people. Come back. Bingo! Bingo Found the naked people. They're dressed in the lobby, playing bingo. And 34. It's one of the funnest Sunday parties on the beach. Because South Beach and Bingo don't really go together. They, you think it doesn't, but it actually does. Salute! Okay, cheers! Thank you! 
But yes, there's alcohol involved, so it can get a bit confusing. B4! Wait! 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 Now one left. If I get B8, I get bingo. Wrong number. Bingo! All right, so I didn't win. But I did have one amazing day at the standard. I just ordered you a Red Bull. Looks like you need it. <laughs> now, time for 7 Weather with Chief Meteorologist Phil Barrow. All right, we expect one more cool night all across South Florida right now. 69 degrees, Miami partly cloudy skies. Fort Lauderdale, 69. The breeze out of the north at around 15 miles per hour. And for you in Key West, mostly clear and a temperature of 66 degrees. It has been dry over the last few days, and today, more of the same. Nothing to report as far as rainfall is concerned from Lake Okeechobee through Palm Beach, Broward, Miami-Dade, and the Keys. And it looks like this will continue to be the norm, at least through Sunday. By then, there is a possibility that we could see a couple more sprinkles moving in across South Florida. But the big story... We still have this big spin right off the northeast, and that is an area of low pressure that's pushing, basically dragging a lot of cold Canadian air in our direction. And tonight we're going to see more of the same. High pressure and firm control across the southeast. We expect lows in the mid-50s along the coast and inland right around the 50-degree mark. And then as far as Thursday is concerned, the breeze will continue all across South Florida. It'll be another glorious day. And then towards the end of the week, we have yet another push of cool Canadian air making its way across South Florida. So the cold snap could stick around at least through the first half of your weekend. Here's the marine forecast. Small craft advisory in effect, but mostly in the Gulf Stream waters. Wind out of the north at 10, seas of 2 to 4 feet, the bay with a moderate chop. For you throughout the lower Florida Keys, also with an advisory due to the winds and seas, near shore waters choppy. So for this evening, we're looking at mainly clear skies. The breeze will still be here, 55 at the coast, 50 inland. We're looking at uh, lows right around the 60 degree mark for you in the lower Keys. Bright sunshine in store for tomorrow. The wind will start to die down, 74 along the coast, 75 in the western suburbs. And here's your extended outlook. We will remain kind of on the cold side through Friday, looking cool on Saturday. We warm up just a little bit for Sunday and Monday, and then take a look at Wednesday. It looks like another front moves in just in time for Thanksgiving. That's your 7 on 7, 7 News. We'll be right back. See a celebrity? Snap their picture, then send it to Deco. You could win a new Casio Exelum digital camera. Details at WSBN.com. This is all you'd get at a department store for $136. But at Ross, you'll get the same outfit, plus the shoes, the bag, the wrap, the jewelry, even the designer watch, and still get a little change. Ross, it's a brand new day. Palmetto General Hospital. If you're 100 pounds or more overweight, come learn about weight loss surgery. It can help you change your life. To attend an upcoming weight loss seminar with Dr. Sosa, call 1-800-522-5292. There are a lot of letters that can represent someone's intelligence. IQ, MBA, PhD, but the letters that really say genius to me, MPG. The Toyota Corolla gets 35 miles per gallon highway and tells you when your tire pressure's low. Smart and good looking. Now it'd be nice to find a guy like that. Nothing compares to the Toyota Corolla, the best-selling car of all time. Visit your local Toyota dealer today and lease a new 09 Toyota Corolla LE for $199 a month. Toyota, moving forward. Hi, I'm Carter Osterhaus. Now, if you know my TV show, then you know Carter Ken. And guess what? Rooms to go can too. I mean, they make decorating easier and more affordable than anyone else, thanks to their famous Rooms to Go package, an entire room of furniture, each piece a great value. And when purchased all together, an even greater value, which is really good, especially these days. So check out the Rooms to Go package. How great a deal is it? Rooms to Go built their business on it. Rick lives for the great deal, so instead of paying over $300 at a department store, he went to Ross and got the exact same outfit, plus one for working out and one for kicking back, and still had almost $100 left over. Ross, it's a brand new day. 
the Cadillac Red Tag event. Right now, you'll find unprecedented values on our best-selling luxury models. From the award-winning Cadillac CTS to the legendary Escalade, now's the time to move up to Cadillac. During the first ever Cadillac Red Tag event, the price on the tag is the price you pay, providing incredible values like this. See your Cadillac dealer. And that's it for this edition of the News at 5. Thanks for watching. I'm Craig Stevens. I'm Val Kiesner. I keep it right here. 7 News at 530 is up next. Now is the time to get into your favorite Volkswagen during the Gunther Volkswagen of Coconut Creek Sign Then Drive Lease Event. Lease a new 2009 Jetta S with zero down payment, zero security deposit for a total of zero due at signing for only $2.59 a month for 39 months. Don't be fooled by newspaper ads with low payments and small disclaimers. For the guaranteed best deal on your new Volkswagen, get to Gunther today. Gunther Volkswagen of Coconut Creek on State Road 7, just a half mile north of Sample Road. Or click on GuntherVW.net. Live from the news station, this is 7 News at 5.30. Now at 5.30, a coach at a prestigious South Florida school in court accused in a sex scandal. Good evening, everybody. He was once all-county swim coach of the year. Now he's in hot water after a stunning admission. Simmons Rosh Lowe live in Pinecrest School in Fort Lauderdale with more. Rosh? Lynn, parents today that we spoke to this afternoon are absolutely bewildered. Here you have a situation where you have a swim coach and he is around children and he is accused of some very serious crimes involving children. You have children at the school? Yeah. And you hear about this news and what goes through your mind? It's scary to feel like, you know, they might not even be safe at school. Parents at the Pinecrest School in Fort Lauderdale reacting to the news that the swim coach, identified as Robert Carrigal, has been arrested and is facing child pornography charges. What do you think? That's not good at all. I don't know. Happen. I don't know. According to published reports, a search of Caragol's laptop showed roughly 40 images of boys under the age of 18 in sexual activity. Pinecrest School has been advised by the U.S. Attorney's Office that one of its swim coaches on the Fort Lauderdale campus, Robert Caragol, has been arrested for alleged possession of child pornography. We do not know any of the details of the investigation at this time. Pinecrest School is cooperating fully with law enforcement. Mr. Carrigal has been placed on administrative suspension. Carrigal also coached swimming at Metro Dade Aquatics, the plantation swim team, and Cypress Bay High School. His neighbors reacting. I feel as though that they should take better, better, do better background checks. I don't understand how they're getting through the system. And it's not only the child, uh, alleged child pornography situation, but according to published reports, Carrigal has admitted to authorities that he actually engaged in sexual activity with minors dating back to 2001, although not presently. So this is a very fluid situation, an ongoing investigation. We do know that Carrigal's next appearance in court will be Monday morning with a bond hearing. We're live in Fort Lauderdale, Roshlo, 7 News. Well, a store employee getting quite the scare today. The worker was tied up, gagged, and robbed on the job at the Advanced America check cashing store on West Flagler Street and 96th Avenue in Northwest Miami-Dade. The crook taking cash and her car keys before driving off in her vehicle. Call Crime Stoppers at 305-471-TIPS if you have any information on this crime. Firefighters on the west coast of Florida keeping a close eye on this brush fire. It started burning yesterday near Tampa. The flames are mostly contained but there is a lot of smoke. Officials worry the heavy smoke could be around for days, even weeks, making driving in the area dangerous. It's one of those cases, FBI and BSO starting from scratch to try and solve a decades-old murder of a three-year-old South Florida girl. Seven's Derek Hayward has the details. My daughter's dead. At least I have an answer. Thank God for that. But somehow we have to find out who did it. Somehow. They found what was left of her on April 21st, 1988, near US 27 and State Road 84, a place now called Weston. A pile of clothes and skeletal remains. 
Three-year-old Julie Mayulo had disappeared near her North Lauderdale home the morning of June 8, 1987. We know that's Julie they have. We know she's gone. We just want to get the bastards that are responsible for her death. Now, 20 years later, the FBI and the Broward Sheriff's Office have reopened the case, offering a $25,000 reward. And starting over, um, a fresh set of eyes, if you will, a fresh set of faces, to look at the case from a different perspective. There's no more atrocious crime than a, a crime against a child. And the person that did this is still out there. Now retired, Don Scarborough was the original detective on the case, a case he has thought about for more than 20 years. What if he didn't stop, you know? It's been 21 years. You, do, you, do you find yourself wondering where's he been? What other little girl may have come you know, across paths with him? As I mentioned, there are certain things that keep you awake at night, old detectives, and that, that clearly is one of them. So fresh detectives are re-interviewing old witnesses and re-tracking old leads more than 20 years later. We're seeking information about individuals who uh, may have left the area um, soon after Julie was abducted, uh, behavioral changes, uh, missing work, uh, exhibiting an unusual or an inordinate amount of interest in the case. It's never too late to come forward. It doesn't matter that, you know, you held the information for 20 years. So if you think you could give this cold case a pulse, you know the number to call by now, 954-493-TIPS, to Crime Stoppers here, where they have never ever betrayed a caller or revealed a name. It's worth the right tip up to $26,000. Near Fort Lauderdale, Derek Hayward, 7 News. Slick streets causing spin outs across the Great Lakes region. It is hard to drive on ice and snow, a thin layer of ice coating highways a day after heavy snowfall in Indiana. 7's Dave Cartoonin is live in the Satellite Center with how residents are digging out tonight. Dave. And our daily installment, Charles, of why we live in South Florida. Many northern Indiana residents went to bed in the fall and woke up in the winter. An overnight snowstorm taking many by surprise, but they would better get used to it because the winter weather isn't going anywhere. I grew up in Austin, Texas, and this is... Uh Quite different. No, we're not in Texas anymore. Mother Nature delivering Indiana its first snowstorm, with winter more than a month away. I've seen worse snows than this at, at this time of the year. And, you know, hey, got to be prepared for it this time. For some of the natives, it just comes with the territory, but for others, they never saw this much snow coming. It started early Monday morning, and by the afternoon, some areas were already a foot deep. The snow falling one to two inches per hour. And while it may look like a winter wonderland from afar, the deep snow on top of the warm streets makes it tough to clear. It's heavy and wet. It's kind of wet. It's heavy. And once in a while, the auger gets all caught up and you have to poke it a little bit and get her going again. Meanwhile, the sudden snowfall is turning drivers into danger. They aren't taking into account the weather. They are still driving like it's sunny in 75, which it's not. Troopers responding to nearly a dozen accidents before the sun even came up. Icy patches making streets slick while other roads are closed due to the mounting white stuff. It's uh, about a foot snow in different places. It's hard pushing places. And they won't be putting away their shovels anytime soon. Forecasters expect more cold, wet weather to come as the week continues. Live in the Satellite Center, Dave Cartoon in 7 News. All right, Dave, an FBI agent is killed in Pennsylvania. The 33-year-old special agent was gunned down while serving a warrant at the home of an alleged cocaine dealer near Pittsburgh. The owner of the house was taken into custody on drug charges. Police are investigating who fired the fatal shot. Pirates tried to pull off another high sea hijacking, this time going after an Indian military warship. Reed Cowan, live in the Plex with the details on this. Reed? That's right, Charles. Here's your headline, Ship Sunk. We're talking about a pirate mothership that was floating in the Gulf of Aden just hours ago. Well, now world leaders are stepping forward saying the waters in this area and off the coast of Africa are not safe. You're looking at the map right there. International maritime officials are jumping in, also saying the situation is out of control. 
Pentagon officials saying the seas near Africa are lawless. This week, I think the British killed a number of pirates on board a ship. The Indians sunk a dhow. The Germans buzzed a British ship with one of their helicopters and prevented a, a pirate situation. Off the coast of Somalia, the owners of a seized Saudi oil super tanker negotiate the release of their ship and its 25 crew members from the well gun grasp of modern day pirates. A big money boat taken off the Kenyan coastline prompting Saudi foreign ministers to call the hijacking outrageous. NATO officials also stepping forward saying the number of hijacking cases are up nearly 80 percent from last year. Already a few times NATO ships have intervened. Sometimes after being fired upon they have used force to repel attacks by pirates. This is video aboard a pirate ship shot by Somali pirates themselves in 2006. As you can see, the pirates are confident and loaded down with an arsenal of bullets and guns. Officials say they're not only about taking ships, but they also take people. 330 mariners are, are being held uh, hostage by these criminals. Uh, and they come from 25 nations across the world. World leaders discouraging negotiating with these pirates, saying it only motivates them to hijack more ships. Reason why an Indian naval ship sank a pirate ship hours ago in the Gulf of Aden. No negotiations there. The Pentagon saying shipping companies need to step up too. We have an obligation to protect international shipping lanes, and that is our first and and. and uh, foremost priority, um, but the companies, the shipping companies, also have an obligation to secure their ships. All right, so right now a group of NATO ships are on the water, including a destroyer from the United States, but keep this in mind. They have a priority to escort World Food Program ships to feed nearly three million Somalians who at this hour are starving to death. Meanwhile, we can tell you an Iranian cargo ship, the latest to be hijacked, the seventh vessel captured in only 12 days. We're watching it. Live in the Plex, Reed Cowan, 7 News. Much more ahead tonight on 7 News. A girl runs away from a man she says tried to lure her into his van. Tonight, word it happened to another girl also on the way to school. We'll tell you where this happened. We are live. A young person proves he is too young to drive when a car ends up inside of a house, and that wasn't the driver's first mistake that day. A bad day at work for a construction worker who is stuck on the job. The race to rescue him is on. And a wheelchair-bound woman with a ticket to Florida, but she ends up at the wrong airport thousands of miles away. We're going to hear from her family next. All right, expect another chilly night all across South Florida. We will see lows in the 50s across the area. And then as far as uh, tomorrow is concerned and getting into Friday, another front is on the way that will keep the chill here at least through Saturday. The entire forecast in just a couple minutes. 7 News, brought to you in part by Santa's Enchanted Forest, the world's largest Christmas theme park, opening Thursday, November 6th. Presented by your VW Sign and Drive event. Only at your Miami Dade VW dealers. The year end sell a thon is on, and the clock is ticking. We're closing out 2008 by giving you some amazing deals. Now, through the end of the year, you can get up to $7,500 in combined cash allowance on 2008 models. Plus, get a no extra charge DVD on select Chrysler, Jeep, and Dodge vehicles. And we have hundreds of financing options available, so we're making it easier to get the new vehicle you want. The Chrysler, Jeep, and Dodge year end sell a thon is on at your local dealer. So hurry in before 2008 is over. A chicken recipe a kid chef can make. Grab a bite with bounties. Ahead. Right here. Okay. okay, before we eat. Uh, before we I, eat. I'd just like to say a few words. I'd like to say a few words. Oh. Don't worry, it's not going to take long. I'm really, really hungry, okay? Every year on this day, I count my blessings. And we have so much to be thankful for. I want to thank the turkey. I want to thank the stuffing <laughs> and the cranberry and sweet potato pie. Let's see. Uh, I'm thankful that next year there'll be another one to join us. Dad, 
I'm so glad to have you closer. I want to thank my mother for having such a wonderful son. <laughs> Most importantly, for the closeness of our friends and family. I should be thankful every day to have you guys in my life, and I am. I just don't tell you guys enough. I feel lucky every day. 45 years and 45 turkeys later, this day is always so special. So let's be grateful for this food. For this wonderful feast. This incredible year. And for each other. I love all of you. Love you too, Dad. Dad. Okay. Publix, where shopping is a pleasure. Welcome back, everybody. Take a look at this boarding blunder. This lady in the wheelchair with a plane ticket to Florida, but ends up at an airport on an island in the Caribbean. Hmm. Hmm. Well, one airline has a lot of explaining to do. Yeah, this family's concerned when their elderly relative ends up far from her intended destination. Seven's Nicole Linsalata at the news desk with her story. Nicole? Well, Lynn and Charles, we may not think that that was such a bad idea if we ended up in the Caribbean, but a lot of questions still left to be answered after that wheelchair-bound woman boards a flight she thought was going to Tampa, but she ended up in Puerto Rico. Not just wrong for an 83-year-old person to have to go through that. 83-year-old Elfrida Cumel flew by herself from Tampa to New York to interview for a spot in an assisted living home. But when she was escorted to her flight back to Tampa later that day, something went very wrong. What I think might have happened is that they brought her on this cart and told her to get off and just sit in a chair. So when the flight started boarding, she got on with everybody else. Elfrida's daughter Vera arrived at the airport in Tampa to pick up her mother, but couldn't find her in the baggage claim area until a man finally called her to say her mother was at the baggage claim looking for her. He said, are you upstairs, downstairs? I said, um, the only place there is arriving flights, baggage claim. The maps in the airport suggested they were both standing in the exact same place. It's like, all right, I'm in a white shirt. I'm walking towards you. Do you see me? And I was like, no. So they both handed their phones to others to see if they could help. And he started to tell me he's speaking in Spanish. He said, this guy is speaking in Spanish. And I said, no, he was been speaking to me in English for about 20 minutes. I said, I've been circling the parking lot, talking to him on the phone, trying to find them. That's when they realized Elfrida did not fly to Tampa. She had boarded a U.S. Airways flight to Puerto Rico. Five ounces of this and three ounces of that you can have, but yet we have somebody here obviously got into the, onto a wrong plane without proper... Uh, credentials to get on that plane. A U.S. Airways spokeswoman said they're still trying to figure out what happened. In the meantime, they put Elfrida up in a hotel until they could get her back home to Tampa. When you scan that barcode, you know, somebody didn't look. Yes, they should have. Well, Elfrida spent the night in San Juan and flew back to Tampa the next morning, where she was reunited with her friends and her family safely. Live in the Plex, Nicole Insalata, 7 News. Cross country tonight, a long day rescue operation in Oklahoma for a man who is trapped in a trench, a sewer line trench collapsing on top of the worker near Oklahoma City. He was stuck nine feet underground. He took, it took crews 14 hours to get this guy out. He was conscious and he was taken to the hospital. Construction stops in California after a building blaze. The fire spreading quickly through the structure, which was still being built near Los Angeles. It also torched nearby power lines and knocked out electricity to some homes. See the problem? One goes to the right, another one goes to the left. It's a dye house demolished into dust in Virginia. One of those smokestacks near Lynchburg falling in the wrong direction. Luckily, it missed the nearby houses and it missed the bystanders. Now, still to come tonight from the Plex, a teenager with a lot of heart after undergoing life-saving surgeries. And this is one for the record books. Dinner is almost done. We're going to show you the recipe that a child chef likes to use when it comes to making chicken. All the more reasons that kids should be cooking in a bite with Falkies. That's right, and serving the adults. That's right. And find out how little Surrey is following in her father's footsteps, so to speak.
The year end sell thon is on, and the clock is ticking. We're closing out 2008 by giving you some amazing deals. Now, through the end of the year, you can get up to 7,500 in combined cash allowance on 2008 models. Plus, get a no extra charge DVD on select Chrysler, Jeep, and Dodge vehicles. And we have hundreds of financing options available, so we're making it easier to get the new vehicle you want. The Chrysler, Jeep, and Dodge year end sell thon is on at your local dealer. So hurry in before 2008 is over. Hello again, everybody. I'm Craig Stevens. Coming up here at 6, a girl says she was walking to school when a stranger gave her a scare. A fellow student with a similar story now, and tonight parents and officials are concerned. Also, police say two middle school students are in for a crash course in the law after one dangerous and destructive drive. We'll have details of these and other stories. Hope you'll join Belkies and me as the news continues here at 6. I can't walk upstairs. I can't play catch with my son. I can't control my diabetes. I can't live like this anymore. I can't stop thinking about my doctor's last warning. I can't imagine not being here to see my daughter get married. I, I can't, can't lose, lose the weight. weight. Yes, you can. You can lose weight and change your life. Find out how by coming to our next seminar and learn about bariatric surgery. We are ranked the number one bariatric program in Florida, and we can help you get healthy. You can do this. Because it's so hard to limit yourself to just one perfect indulgence, the Civic EXL offers you a whole bunch of them, like leather interior, heated front seats, available navigation with voice recognition, and Bluetooth connectivity. The Civic EXL from Honda. Indulge yourself. Get APR financing as low as 1.9% on 2009 Civics for well-qualified buyers. It's the a ride at the Broward County Fair, November 20th through 30th, Fort Lauderdale Stadium. Exciting entertainment nightly. Visit Kids Town. Thrill the motorcycle daredevils in an awesome midway of rides, games, attractions, and vendors. Call 954-970-FAIR or visit BrowardCountyFair.com for info. The Broward County Fair. Got to be there. Our month-long series of Cooking with Young Chefs continues tonight. That's right, and this time the Helping Hands are showing us how to make one of their all-time specialties. Time to grab a bite with Falkies. The chefs, Johnny and Zach Vincennes. There's nothing like working with your father in the kitchen, owning a restaurant. It's just a, it's a new experience for me. The restaurant, Johnny V in Fort Lauderdale. It is on Las Olas. Uh, we've been here about five years. We serve uh, regional American cuisine. The dish we're making, herbed garlic chicken in a bag. Everybody likes a good roasted chicken, and this is a different spin on it. Anybody can do this at home, you know? It's a, it's a great dish. Start by preparing a marinade in a blender. Add fresh basil, salt, and pepper. Roasted garlic we make here fresh at Johnny V's. I'm sure you can pick it up at any local grocery store. Then some vegetable oil and fresh sage and blend this all together until smooth. Now season the chicken with salt and pepper. Place it on saran wrap and pour the marinade over the top. Rub it around a little bit, and then we're going to wrap the chicken. Next, cover the chicken in tin foil. Tin foil keeps the saran wrap from melting. Let it cook in a 350 degree oven for 45 minutes. Then you let your chicken sit at room temperature, and once it's cooled down a little bit, put it in the refrigerator for at least two hours, okay? Now unwrap the chicken and remove the bones. In a hot pan with vegetable oil, sear the chicken for a few minutes, flip it over and finish it in the oven. To plate the dish, serve this chicken with a side of mashed potatoes, mixed veggies, and don't forget a nice glass of Cabernet Sauvignon for the adults, of course. Hi, welcome to Johnny V Restaurant on Las Olas in Fort Lauderdale. This is our herb garlic chicken in a bag. Bon appetit. 
Looks good. For more information on the restaurant and the recipe, all you have to do is log on to our website at WSVN.com. In the Plex, I'm Belkis Nure. Bon appetito. Now, time for 7 Weather with Chief Meteorologist Phil Barrow. Well, the chill continues all across South Florida. We expect temperatures in the 50s again tonight. Right now, 69 degrees at the airport in Miami under partly cloudy skies for you in Fort Lauderdale. 69, the breeze out of the north at around 15 miles per hour. And Key West just glorious, clear, and a temperature of 66 degrees. Now, anytime you get cold air moving in, it usually comes in dry. And take a look at the uh, local storm tracking radar. There's really nothing out here. There's no activity from Lake Okeechobee down in through the uh, lower Florida Keys. And it will be this way at least for the uh, next uh, couple of days. So we have this big spin right here that continues to push cold air in our direction. So we expect the lows tonight across South Florida to be in the low to mid 50s. That high pressure system will start to push away. And it looks like by Friday we will get yet another push of cold air that will keep us on the cool side at least throughout the first half of your weekend. Here's the marine forecast for tonight. Small craft advisory in effect. The bay with a moderate chop for you throughout the lower Florida Keys. Small craft advisory as well. Inside the reef, 2 to 3. Beyond the reef, 4 to 7. Now for tonight, mainly clear. We're looking at 55 along the uh, beaches, 50 in the western suburbs. It will be breezy for you throughout the lower Florida Keys. Temps right around the 60 degree mark. For tomorrow, bright sunshine, 74 at the coast, 75 inland. And here's your extended outlook. We're going to stay cold at least through Friday, cool on Saturday, and then back to mild for Sunday and the rest of your work week. That's your 7 on 7, 7 News. We'll be right back. Thanksgiving is almost here and there's not much time. So hurry into the Anna's Linens Thanksgiving sale and save up to 75% off department store prices on everything you need for the holidays. Find a store near you at annaslinens.com and get in before time runs out. The key to a great Marsala sauce is the wine. And our wine's been made by the Lombardo family in Sicily for over 100 years. At Carabas, making our Marsala sauce takes patience. We take the wine, the prosciutto, the mushrooms, and the butter, and we reduce it down until all the flavors blend together perfectly. Marsala sauce over our grilled chicken and sirloin. Mwah! Delicioso! Two Marsala favorites, one plate. At Carabas, good things happen around our table. The year-end sell-a-thon is on, and the clock is ticking. We're closing out 2008 by giving you some amazing deals. Now, through the end of the year, you can get up to 7,500 in combined cash allowance on 2008 models. Plus, get a no-extra-charge DVD on select Chrysler, Jeep, and Dodge vehicles. And we have hundreds of financing options available, so we're making it easier to get the new vehicle you want. The Chrysler, Jeep, and Dodge year-end sell-a-thon is on at your local dealer. So hurry in before 2008 is over. January 2nd, sold out. January 4th, sold out. January 16th, sold out. January 18th, sold out. Now a fifth show's been added. Friday, February 6th. Hit. After hit. After hit. Get ready for Billy Joel. Now by overwhelming demand, a fifth show. Friday, February 6th at Hard Rock Live. Tickets on sale now at Hard Rock Live box office and Ticketmaster.com. Four sold out shows. Now a fifth show. Friday, February 6th. Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. The clock is ticking down on Thanksgiving, and Anna's Linens has you covered on everything you need for the holidays, with savings of up to 75% off department store prices. Find a store near you at annaslinens.com and get in before time runs out. Now, at 5.30, from the sexiest man on the screen to Tinseltown's top tot, the buzz on Hollywood's hottest. No more calls. We got a winner, folks. People Magazine naming this year's Sexiest Man Alive. And Forbes Magazine releasing its second annual Hollywood's Hottest Tots. We got everything hot. Check it out. Mr. Droper, there's only one tent. We're not really used to one. A woman? Guests. We're not used to guests. That's what I was about to say. He's the thunder from Down Under. People Magazine naming Australian actor Hugh Jackman the Sexiest Man Alive. You can't be serious. Uh, yeah, dude. People Magazine says you're the sexiest. The list already on People's website. And check out who else got named the Hollywood hottie. New James Bond, Daniel Craig, Mad Men's John Hamm, tween heartthrob Zac Efron, TV hunk Robert Buckley, and actor Blair Underwood, among others. And check out who else is hot. 
Suri Cruz, the two-year-old daughter of Tom Cruise and Katie Holmes, tops Forbes.com's second annual list of Hollywood's 10 hottest tots. Three Jolie Pitts also make the list. Shiloh is in second place after coming in first last year. Zahara is in third place, and Pax is fourth on the list. Rounding out the top 10, Sam Alexis Woods, daughter of Tiger Woods and his wife, Ellen Cruz Beckham, son of David and Victoria Beckham, Matilda Rose Ledger, daughter of Michelle Williams and the late Heath Ledger, David Banda, son of Madonna and Guy Ritchie, Sean Preston Federline, son of Britney Spears and Kevin Federline, and Sam Sheen, daughter of Denise Richards and Charlie Sheen. Congrats, kiddies. Forbes compiled their list based on the Tots media attention and their parents' popularity. Meantime, you can check out all of People's Sexy Hunks when the new issue hits newsstands tomorrow, live in the Plex. Louis Aguirre, 7 News. Looks good. All right, Lou. That is 7 News at 5.30. Thank you for choosing us tonight. I'm Charles Villar. I'm Lynn Martinez. 7 News at 6 begins right now. Straight ahead. South Florida bundling up as the mercury goes down. And don't expect the temps to rebound soon. Two students with similar scares on the way to school. And that has police patrolling the streets. A stolen car on a destructive drive. And you may be surprised who was behind the wheel. Could this be a picture-perfect clue in a murder at a South Florida mall? And these bulbs may save you money. But what's inside may be unsafe. A 7 News special report. Light, fright. The News at 6 starts now. Live from the news station, this is 7 News at 6. Right off the top at 6 o'clock, a brisk beginning to the day across South Florida. The mercury feel reaching lows that we have not felt for months. Live pictures outside our North Bay Village studios, the sun going down and there's definitely still a chill. And good evening, temps tumbling into the 40s in some places. This cool change could be with us for a while. Chief Meteorologist Phil Farrow joins us. He's live with the details. Phil? You are correct. This uh, cool air looks like it's going to be with us throughout the weekend. Now this morning we woke up to 49 in Perrine and Pembroke Pines. Homestead in Hollywood with 50 degrees, 51 in Fort Lauderdale. Miami and Miami Beach with 52. How will we wake up tomorrow? We're looking at temperatures just a tad warmer between 50 and 55. But as you can clearly see, this cool air will be with us for quite a while. Advisories in effect for North Florida, and that's because we expect temperatures here to be covering around the 32 degree range. So there is a freeze warning basically just south of Gainesville and right in through Jacksonville. So we were just mentioning that the cool air will stick around. Let's take a look at your five day temperature trend. The average high is 81 degrees, average low 67. Now the temperatures are going to get a little warmer, but at least through your weekend and the early part of next week, we will still remain below seasonal averages. And some long range models are showing that there's a possibility of another front moving in just before Thanksgiving. I'll have a lot more on this in the local forecast coming up in weather. Also tonight, two students on their way to class when they're targeted for trouble. And he did say something to her, told her to, to get in the car. Police investigating the scares near school. The teen says a man tried to lure her into his car. Another student with a similar story, and both incidents have an entire school community concerned. Seven's Vanessa Medina live from the scene in Larder Hill. Vanessa? And if you're a parent tonight, you need to be concerned. First off, we have one student, 11 years old, a student here at Broadway State Elementary. Now, if you just look over here, the second, a 13-year-old at Parkway Middle School. We have two predators here, not one, two predators lurking around Broward County, lurking around Lauder Hill tonight. And police are saying these two men will stop at nothing to get their hands on vulnerable children. All right, uh, can you put the officer back on the phone? A Lauder Hill police captain talks to a young victim who was just seconds away from being abducted. 
told me that she was walking to school this morning she was being stopped. Two separate incidents and we have two separate vehicles involved. Two different predators, the first stalking a 13 year old on her way to Parkway Middle School. Walking to a bus stop, she first noticed him on Monday. She says driving a white box truck, possibly from a water company. The victim in this case was approached by a black male who was driving a vehicle. Um, she described him as being bald, uh, Jamaican or Creole accent. Uh, he was in his uh, thir late 30s to early 40s. He drove up telling her, get in the car with me. She ran. Then she saw him again today. But he drove off when he saw she had company. Oh my God, they should take an action right away. The next victim, even younger, 11 years old. She was walking near 19th Street and 58th Avenue, police say, when this pervert pulled up in a large four-door late model silver car. A child was attempted to be a car stopped and gestured a student to come. And she, of course, ran back home and then the police came. That man in his 20s or 30s getting out of his car to grab her. This is how she remembered him. Quarter words, she said, fat face with uh, small lips, uh, wearing a hat and, and braids. Somebody comes up to you and they tell you to try and get in their car. What do you do? Well, I was watching a program and they said, like, if they're in a car, walk the other way from the car. Or if you're, like, by yourself and they're walking, to say, like, to scream fire and help. Now, if you recognize the descriptions according to the captain at Lauder Hill Police, you are urged to call Broward Crime Stoppers. The phone number 954-493-TIPS. Now, this is also a good time, parents, for you to talk to your kids and tell them what they should be doing if they're walking to school or a bus stop and someone approaches them. This story ended okay. These girls are home tonight with their families. This could have been much worse. Reporting live tonight in Lauder Hill, Vanessa Medina, 7 News. Now at 6, they aren't even old enough to drive, but two students being called homewreckers after police say they stole a car and headed right into a house. 7's Blake Berman live for us on the scene in West Park near Miramar. Blake? Yeah, you know, Craig, we are in West Park right now. That is just west of I-95 on County Line Road. And here in West Park, the legal driving age, just like the rest of the state, is 16 years old. But today, according to BSO, two kids simply did not get the message, and this is the end result. Someone's house, as you can see, in pieces. I found out it was a group of middle schoolers, and they couldn't even barely see over the dashboard. Not old enough to drive, but it did not matter. This is where two kids ended up plowing right through Fritzner Sinfar's home. Uh, sick, the shower in uh, my bedroom. I think the bed is torn down. Broward Sheriff's Office says two kids steal this Nissan Altima at a nearby apartment complex when the car's owner momentarily left the car running around 8.30 in the morning. So I want to show you the landscape over here because everything is really close. You see those apartments over there? That is where this whole thing started. That's about 300 yards away. Then back over this way, this is the house where their ride ended. So you can see they did not make it very far. And let's take you back over here. However far they did make it, it wasn't like they were the best of drivers because they spent most of their trip in the median. Thank God no, nobody was, was not inside at that time. Anybody would have woke. This is the 12 and 14 year old leaving a Broward substation Wednesday afternoon. We've blurred out their faces because they are juveniles and you can just tell by the size of the 12 year old that police here are dealing with children. Still, this family is forced to rebuild a house they've lived in for eight years, a house they just finished renovating. I'm planning to stay somewhere else until uh, I got everything fixed up. It just really upsets me that now pretty much a lot of this is gonna come out of their pockets. Okay, now the Broward Sheriff's Office says these two, the 12 and 14 year old will be charged with grand theft auto and the driver for operating a car without having a driver's license. Now the disaster relief people are on scene right now and they tell me it's gonna take about $80,000 to fix this house. Craig, to put that in perspective, these folks here could have bought a brand new luxury car with that money. That is the very latest tonight in West Park, Blake Berman, 7 News. All right, Blake, a South Florida neighborhood drying out following a big water main break. Water finally receding today at parking lots and streets along Northwest 55th Avenue and 169th Street 
in northwest Miami-Dade. Construction crews were installing draining systems yesterday when they broke a water pipe which flooded that neighborhood. Crews shut off water to the area last night until that cap was leaked. A new clue denied in the case of a murder at a mall. Police want you to get a good look at it. Seven's Dave Cartoonin has this new clue, and he's over at the news desk. Dave? Craig, they are two murders and a carjacking that investigators insist are connected. And now an old clue is breathing new life into the Boca Town Center murders. It was the break Palm Beach County Sheriff Rick Bradshaw was convinced would solve the Boca Town Center murders. Surveillance video of two men in Connecticut and Massachusetts using the credit card number of Randy Gorenberg, murdered in March 2007 after leaving the Boca Town Center Mall. We just want to talk to these people. It's very, very important to find out where they got the card, when they got the card, under what circumstances. So it's, it's, it's important. For the fourth time, America's Most Wanted will feature the Boca Town Center murders this weekend. And they're bringing in some high-powered help. I said, we have a special relationship with NASA. Let us try to enhance the video. So this Saturday night, this picture and this video will be on America's Most Wanted. The enhanced photo is a marked improvement over the old grainy video, showing one of the men in a distinctive print shirt and what appears to be a New York Yankees cap. It's amazing how people recognize different clothes, like Tommy Bahama shirts or whatever, or a logo on the hat and say, hey, you know what? This guy wears this all the time. We know it. The clue is not only critical to Gorenberg's murder, but also may hold the key to solving the murders of Nancy and Joey Bocchicchio, who were murdered under near identical circumstances, leaving the same mall last December. Cops are convinced the murders and a similar carjacking last year are related. The timing of the story also comes with a stern reminder as the holiday shopping season begins. I would say don't assume it couldn't happen to you. Be street smart. Somebody targeted a mall in Boca Raton. All America's Most Wanted airs Saturday night at 9 p.m. right here on 7 if you want to catch the fourth installment of AMW's continued search for the Boca Town Center murderer. Live at the news desk, Dave Cartoon in 7 News. All right, Dave, thank you. Lots more ahead here from the 7 Newsplex. A car losing control and twin brothers unable to get out of the way in time. We're live with this one at 6.30. Al-Qaeda out with a new hate-filled message. The target, the president-elect. A worker trapped in a trench and forced to endure a long and grueling wait for help. Also, more and more fluorescent bulbs lighting up homes, but something inside them can make them unsafe. Stay tuned for our special assignment report, Light Fright. That's next. Our biggest savings of the year. This week at Rick Case. It's no pay November. Save thousands and don't pay a dime till 2009 at Rick Case. New Hondas that get up to 45 miles per gallon from $135 a month. Only Rick Case gives you a 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty. Plus huge savings on used cars. We've got millions in financing and leasing through Honda. With zero down, zero percent, or zero payments. Not a dime till 09 during no pay November. This week at Rick Case Honda. I-75 at Griffin. Get it all with Comcast Digital Cable and On Demand. 10,000 titles you can start anytime. Most are free. And access to over 1,000 HD programming choices when you get HD DVR service for only $9.99 more per month. Get what you want. Get what you need. Get digital cable and On Demand. $29.99 a month for six months. Add HD DVR for $9.99 a month. Call 1-800-COMCAST. Yeah. Crime Labs. They make it look so easy on TV. Now, see how it's done for real. Patrick shows you what the TV dramas don't. Tonight at 10. We're up early thinking about your health, even if you're not. At the Publix Bakery, we bake our Italian five-grain bread fresh every morning by adding a mixture of whole grains, flax, and sunflower seeds. We make it easy to get more nutritious grains in your diet because we have your healthy day in mind. Aw, uh, go for a walk? Publix, where shopping is a pleasure. Our biggest savings of the year. This week at Rick Case. It's no pay November. Save thousands and don't pay a dime till 2009 at Rick Case. New Hyundais that get over 30 miles per gallon from $129 a month. Only Rick Case gives you a 20-year, 200,000-mile warranty. Plus huge savings on used cars. We've got millions in financing and leasing through Hyundai. With zero down, zero percent, and zero payments. Not a dime till 09 during no pay November. This week at Rick Case Hyundai. I-75 or 441. They save you money. 
But is there a hidden danger inside? Assume that you break it. The bulk of it will be released in the, as gas into the indoor air, into your room. A 7 new special assignment report. Right, right. Some people are going green at home and switching to energy-saving compact fluorescent light bulbs. Handled with great care, they're great. But as Patrick Frazier reports in the special assignment report, if one breaks, you may have trouble. From the bright lights of Hollywood, global warming, to the lights in your living room, the switch to compact fluorescent bulbs is on. I would estimate that I've changed about 20. And the Martinez family has a lasting impact from the spiral-shaped fluorescents. I installed uh, my fluorescent bulbs here at home over a year ago, and I have yet to change the first one. And it's that idea of saving money that's convincing some people to turn off these regular light bulbs and turn on compact fluorescents, or CFLs. They provide the same amount of light, they last longer, and they use less electricity. That's all great. But some people are concerned users aren't being told one thing, and they're being left in the dark. It contains a tiny amount, a small, small amount of uh, liquid, or they call it elemental mercury. No big deal as long as the light bulb is not broken. Because when it crashes, small amounts of mercury are released into your home. As soon as it's exposed to air, mercury vapors leave the surface in wisps and plumes and breathing the mercury vapors can be dangerous to children and pregnant women. Long-term exposure to high concentration of mercury may cause a lot of health problems, from permanent damage to the brain, to the kidneys, to impact or impede the development of children or unborn children. Light bulbs don't contain a lot of mercury, but even the small amount found in the fluorescent lights can be dangerous. Once you break it the first five minutes, many studies have shown that those numbers spike up in the room, and especially at the breathing levels. Levels that environmental groups say are not safe, which is why many scientists take precautions. Well, we took our compact fluorescent lamps out of uh, our children's bedrooms. The hysteria over these lights started in Maine after a woman broke a compact fluorescent bulb in her seven-year-old daughter's bedroom. She called the state to find out what to do and was told to hire a professional hazmat crew to clean it up. When she found out it had cost $2,000, she just closed off her daughter's room and sealed it up. The Maine Department of Environmental Protection has, is on record that, that that was the wrong information that was inadvertently uh, put out there. And of course it created uh, a, lot of, a lot of people got scared over that. After hearing about the Maine reaction, Florida did its own test and concluded the bulbs are safe if you handle them properly. If a bulb breaks, Florida says, open the window in the room, then turn on a fan and point it at the window. Wait half an hour, put on gloves, and clean up the broken glass. If it's on a tile or a linoleum or, or a hard surface, then you could use a damp paper towel to pick up the rest of it. If you're on carpet, then we recommend using something like duct tape or packaging tape and kind of go around and, and pick up the pieces again. Everything should be double bagged, sealed, and taken to a county hazardous waste facility like this one. It's extra work, but many people say it's worth it. Every bulb in my house is uh, a compact fluorescent. It consumes about 25% the power, so I think the uh, benefits well outweigh the risk. Just be careful and recycle them. They keep your lights bright and help you avoid light fright. For this special report, I'm Patrick Frazier, 7 News. Some retailers allow customers to bring in burnt-out bulbs right to the store for recycling. For more information on where to go, log on to our website at WSVN.com. Still to come here tonight, drivers going up for a spin when Old Man Winter hits the Midwest. We'll have more on this in the next half hour. All right, expect another chilly night on tap, a lows in the low to mid-50s, and then towards Friday, we have another front moving in. We'll have the entire forecast in just a couple of minutes. And one girl with two heart transplants, but what happened between them, truly remarkable. We'll have that after the break. Not until we have sports. I'm Steve. The Dolphins say the game against the Patriots Sunday will be different than the first time they play. And it's a history-making day in Major League Baseball. We'll tell you what's so special about it ahead in seven sports.
Celebrate the great American smokeout. Visit TobaccoFreeFlorida.com. Palmetto General Hospital. If you're 100 pounds or more overweight, come learn about weight loss surgery. It can help you change your life. To attend an upcoming weight loss seminar with Dr. Sosa, call 1-800-522-5292. It's always a party at Mardi Gras. This sale is so huge, Carl's will be closed Friday to mark down everything in the store. Starting Saturday at 10 a.m., take an extra 15% off Carl's already reduced prices. Save up to 65% on leather sofas from Italy, fabulous dining rooms and bedrooms, handcrafted from imported hardwoods. Plus, pay no interest and make no payments for a year. This Saturday, start with our low sale prices, then take an extra 15% off at Carl's. If you can dream it, we can make it happen. Our biggest savings of the year. This week at Rick Case. It's no pay November. Save thousands on brand new Hondas and you don't pay till May. May. This week at Rick Case. Huge savings on new Honda Cruisers from $33.99. New ATVs from $24.99. Aqua Tracks just $69.99. Even dirt bikes for only $11.39. We've got millions in financing through Honda available now, now. with zero down, zero percent, and zero payments. You don't pay till May, May during no pay November. This week at Rick Case Honda, I-75 at Griffin. The year-end sell-a-thon is on, and the clock is ticking. We're closing out 2008 by giving you some amazing deals. Now, through the end of the year, you can get up to 7,500 in combined cash allowance on 2008 models. Plus, get a no-extra-charge DVD on select Chrysler, Jeep, and Dodge vehicles. And we have hundreds of financing options available, so we're making it easier to get the new vehicle you want. The Chrysler, Jeep, and Dodge year-end sell-a-thon is on at your local dealer. So hurry in before 2008 is over. Heart to heart for a teen who underwent life-saving surgeries in South Florida. She had two transplants and survived a medical miracle in between the operations. Seven's Roy Ramos explains. Tears run down the face of 14-year-old Dejana Simmons while thanking the team of doctors at Holtz Children Hospital on Jackson Memorial Medical Center that kept her alive with an artificial heart for close to four months after her body rejects a heart transplant. We decided to remove her heart and, um, tran and implant um, two artificial pumps um, in order to bridge her over to a second heart transplant. For a total of 118 days, Dejana lived essentially without a heart, making her the first pediatric patient to survive with an artificial heart for that length of time. It was like I was a fake person, like I didn't really exist, I was just here. But now I know that I really was here, and I did live without it. Dejana received her second heart transplant in late October, followed by a kidney transplant the day after and according to doctors, is doing well. She will be able to do most of the things that um, a girl of her age would do. I couldn't be even happier to see her sitting here able to walk and talk and do different things with different people. She made a lot of friends here. And while Dejana does have a lot of friends at Holtz Children's Hospital with her birthday coming up this Saturday, I'm pretty sure she already has plans of her own. Go to Bayside. <laughs> Bayside? <laughs> What do you want to do now? Riding the water boats. Dejana will be going home later today and will consistently need to come back to take medication to build up her immune system. Later next week, she starts her exercise program to start building up strength to do things that most children her age do. JMH, Roy Ramos, 7 News. Now, time for 7 Weather with Chief Meteorologist Bill Barrow. Hi, the chill continues all across South Florida. Right now, we're looking at 67 degrees at Miami, partly cloudy skies. Still breezy in Fort Lauderdale, 12 mile per hour winds, some clouds are moving in, a temperature of 67, and Key West still clear, and a temperature of 65. This is the local storm tracking radar. It has been dry over the last couple of days, and it will continue to be dry as long as that cold air from Canada continues to sink across South Florida. So here's that big spin. That is an area of low pressure sitting across the Northeast, and that is responsible for pushing all that air from Canada and send it across South Florida. So for tonight, 
We're still looking at high pressure and firm control, lows in the 50s. By tomorrow, another glorious day. The breeze will stick around. And then by Thursday, see, another front making its way across North Florida. That will move into our area sometime during the day on Friday. This will assure that the cool air will stay with us at least for the first half of your weekend. So here's the marine forecast. Small craft advisory in effect, especially in the Gulf Stream waters. The bay with a moderate chop. For you throughout the lower Florida Keys, also with an advisory due to the winds and seas, inside the reef, 2 to 3, beyond the reef, 4 to 7, and nearshore waters, choppy. So for this evening, mainly clear, another cold night, 55 at the coast, 50 inland. For you throughout the lower Florida Keys, we're looking at 60 degrees, very nice. And then by tomorrow, nice and sunny, the breeze will start to kind of calm down, 74 at the beaches, 75 in the western suburbs, and here's your extended outlook. All right, take a look at this. Through Friday, we're still going to see some cold temperatures. Saturday, cool, mild for Sunday and Monday. It's going to be a little warmer on Tuesday, but by Wednesday, another front moves in just in time for Thanksgiving to cool us down. And that's your 7 on 7 forecast. Sounds perfect. Thank you, Phil. Still ahead from the Plex, the Finns hoping to shut down the Patriots offense for the second time this season. You're going to hear from the team on their plan for success next in sports. Tonight on the drive, it's cold outside, so Shireen's breaking out the winter wear South Florida style. Give Deco a warm reception tonight at 7.30. Proof that all good things come in threes. Lauderdale BMW introduces the new redesigned 2009 3 Series. Lease starting from just $389 a month or 0.9% financing. As always, zero cost, full maintenance. Redefining the category with exceptional design and performance. The new 2009 3 Series at Lauderdale BMW. The real difference. Two locations in Fort Lauderdale and Pembroke Pines. It's a special time of year. <laughs> time to give the ones you love the power to oh. own the road. Yeah. Celebrate the season of Audi with over 130 channels of Sirius Satellite Radio and enjoy no payments at signing when you lease or finance select Audi models. Remember the Joneses and all their stuff and how people were always trying to keep up? Well, some of us woke up instead. We no longer want big and flashy. We want real, true, and honest. We want to stand on solid ground, and we want a bank that does the same. A bank that's here to help us prosper, whatever our definitions of prosper may be. Live solid. Bank solid. SunTrust. Of all the innovations in the new Odyssey from Honda, the most significant is one we hope you never see. It's the system of front and side airbags that in the event of an incident can deploy in a remarkable fraction of a second. It's an innovation we're very proud of. Though if you never experience it, well, nothing would make us happier. The Odyssey from Honda. Lease an Odyssey for $2.99 a month for well-qualified customers. Change is on the way. Change to lower prices. Change in service. Change to great extras. Tamiami Chrysler Jeep Dodge can deliver. Find the relief you need with our factory wholesale price stimulus. Expect great service with our new personal car care plan. And take advantage of our so many extras package. Be part of the change and buy American starting at Tamiami Chrysler Jeep Dodge, 8250 Southwest 8th Street. Time now for Seven Sports with Steve Shapiro. The Dolphins are likely to see a different team Sunday than the one they shellacked in week three. Dolphins and the Patriots. Back in September, the Dolphins harassed quarterback Matt Castle, sacked him five times. Castle only threw for 130 yards, but just last week, Castle threw for 400 yards in a loss to the Jets, and the Dolphins have new respect. Oh, you, you think? No doubt about that, you know. And that's why I was saying, I mean, the, the castle we seen then was a young castle, got two games on him now. It's a, this is a different guy. You can see he's a lot more comfortable. They opened up the playbook a little bit for him. Um, he, he has more confidence now throwing the ball a little bit more, um, especially if you look at last game. I mean, he slung it quite a bit. He had 400 yards passing. 
This is a big game. Canes at Georgia Tech Thursday night. Can you believe Randy Shannon? The Canes coach says he's oblivious to what's being said about his team. The Canes are riding high. They've won five games in a row. They're ranked 23rd in the country. They got a good chance at a conference championship. The coach says that he's not paying any attention. I really don't look at it. I don't read newspapers during football season. I don't look at ratings. Oh, that's good. I mean, no big deal. We got a game we got to win. I'm proud of this football team. Of what, they've been, of what they've been doing, but we still got a, like anything, we got a long year still ahead of us. Come on, Randy. Back to back for the Heat after winning at Washington last night, home tonight against Toronto. What just happened? The Heat with six players in double figures last night, including 13 from Daquan Cook. Cook also came up with some key defensive plays like this one. If I wanted to play for this team, I was going to have to defend. You know, uh, like everybody know, in the NBA, offense is going to come. You know, it's the ones that's going to play the most and be in the game the longest I can defend. And that was my main thing, you know. I